Well, to talk more about the legacy of the 9-11 terror attacks, I'm now joined live from London by author and journalist Afshin Ratansi. Thanks so much for being with us uh, live here on RT, Afshin. Well, the U.S. saw the 9-11 attacks as an act of war on its own soil, so uh, surely it was justified to lash out in the way that it did. I mean, what else would any other country have done in the same circumstances? Well, it was certainly a tragedy, but uh, the definition of an act of war, of course, is a nation state. It involves a nation state. And it wasn't, this wasn't Pearl Harbor, although, of course, Roosevelt at that time, uh, they say, didn't know that was going to happen. This, this wasn't an act of war. It was a criminal act uh, led by someone who was uh, from a family who were very close to uh, the Bush family. And uh, I think many people now see it as a blowback for years and decades and uh, arguably centuries of uh, American power, and uh, I suppose it signals the beginning of the end of American empire. Why was the U.S. so completely unable to prevent this from happening, do you think? I think uh, institutional structures, even in a country as advanced as the sole superpower on Earth, uh, were at fault. Uh, many people have said uh, the uh, institutional and bureaucratic procedures didn't allow them to uh, uh, shoot down those planes before they hit the World Trade Center and so forth. But uh, perhaps a, a bigger malaise here is that all systems seem to have failed. The media, the courts, the uh, police forces, the intelligence agencies, government. It's as if, uh, and this happens when empires uh, start to fold. Uh, these structures uh, calcify and, uh, and arguably um, they, they, they can't uh, stop asymmetric attacks anyway. I mean, it is, it is difficult to attack, uh, to, to defend yourself against um, a terror group like, uh, which is small and uh, all it takes, as they say, is, is one of them theirs to be successful and, uh, and that's what happens. Let's talk about the aftermath, the, the, the reaction obviously leading to the Iraq conflict and indeed the Afghanistan war. Well, it may have been a, a long 10-year war there in Afghanistan and cost more lives than the U.S. would ever have imagined. But surely, with Afghanistan now on a path to, to democracy, many would say this is the right thing to have happened. It, 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 in, in other words, the conflict there in Afghanistan has been justified, hasn't it? I think American intervention in Afghanistan and, uh, of course, the other superpower previously, the Soviet Union, has proved again and again uh, very dangerous for the superpowers involved. And we know that in the past few hours, uh, I think it's 77 at the moment, the uh, injured uh, count of American soldiers in the past few hours. Uh, Afghanistan uh, is not uh, an easy place uh, for America to take over. And I think if one asked Hamid Karzai, he'd say his first responsibility is to the Afghanistan people. He'd say that in public. And, and then to the wider region, not to the United States. So uh, the idea that the United States uh, can take uh, sucker from uh, what's happened in Afghanistan, uh, I don't think so. And uh, as to uh, democracy building, democracy building needs to be created from the ground up. And uh, uh, one wouldn't uh, want to uh, go into Egypt now because the Transitional Council is causing some problems from what was obviously a people's revolution against a U.S.-backed dictator. So, so you don't think then that lessons have been learned from Afghanistan? The U.S., of course, has been involved in the military campaign in Libya, which has now seen Gaddafi's regime being toppled. I mean, many would say this is a victory for NATO, or do you actually predict there will be a similar prolonged instability that uh, we're seeing in Afghanistan and indeed in Iraq? I think the continued U.S. support for dictators, for uh, vile regimes, means that uh, it makes the same mistakes again and again. So that in Libya, uh, we now hear that it's backing, um, well, who is it backing? It's obviously backing some revolutionaries who want a genuine transformation of Libyan governance, but it's also backing people that, uh, well, some say, are uh, quite close to uh, the ideas of uh, Osama bin Laden's. And uh, as we all know, the Americans were what created and what funded uh, the Mujahideen. Let's uh, see whether the Americans are yet again making the same mistake. But on a larger scale, uh, economic uh, problems, social problems, civic problems, uh, the response from the United States to 9-11 was, uh, was so catastrophically wrong uh, that uh, Osama bin Laden might not get what he wants. But uh, people all around the world have been affected uh, so poorly, so badly by U.S. policy. And we must remember uh, that the U.S., this is also the anniversary of the American-backed uh, coup against Allende in Chile in 1973. 
and uh, lots of people in the global south still remember how their countries have been distorted and destroyed in so many ways by American power. Well, uh, just briefly and finally, you talk about the way people have been affected by, this, uh, uh, by these events. Now, of course, the UK has supported the US in its uh, fight against terror, as they like to call it, but uh, Europe does in many ways seem like a still a very dangerous place to be. I mean, you're there in London. Uh, how is it, do you think, affecting our lives now in Europe? And, and indeed, how can we now deal with this, uh, this threat of terrorism in Europe? Of course, we did suffer here, the 7-7 uh, bombings uh, a few years after 2001. But one doesn't want to over-egg the threat of terrorism. Uh, there is always a uh, reason why terrorists act. I think often enough it is to, to do with all sorts of insecurities that societies feel. As to uh, whether Europe really is more dangerous, I think, uh, I think uh, we, we still have to wait and see. But I think European governments certainly, after the reaction by the U.S. government to uh, the events of 9-11, realize that they have to look elsewhere, not just because of uh, the U.S. reaction, uh, but it took a huge toll on the American economy as well. And I think many people are now looking to the new superpowers. And uh, it's a sad day uh, for some. It's a sad day for those who believe in, say, the Constitution, the original Constitution of the United States of America, one of the greatest ever, and see how uh, superpowers, they rise and they fall. Good to hear what you have to say, Afshin. Very interesting to hear your thoughts on this. Afshin Ratansi, author and journalist, joining us live there in London.